Hello guys, I'm Nazim Hassan and today's topic is wideband patch antenna design in CST. Now what you are watching in the screen is the traditional narrowband patch antenna. And this one is the wideband patch antenna. Well the difference between them is the ground plane. If you notice that in the first antenna the ground plane is full, but in the second antenna in the wideband patch antenna, the ground plane is partial. So what's the performance difference between them? There is a lot of differences in performance between the narrowband and the wideband patch antenna. For example, if we look at the written loss plot of the narrowband patch antenna, you will find a narrowband frequency response. For example, This is the typical response for a narrowband patch antenna. But as for the wideband patch antenna, the response will be wider, much wider, because the capacitance between the ground plane and the radiator will be decreased, and it will increase the bandwidth. Okay, so let's go to wideband patch antenna design. So uh, what we will design today is kind of like this. We will have a substrate and on top of the substrate we'll have the patch, the radiator element, and then we'll have a partial ground plane beneath. So this is a top view of today's wideband patch and that is the bottom view with the partial ground plane. Okay, so let's go to CST Microwave Studio platform in order to design this very antenna. And before going to CST, this is the dimension that we will use in our design. We will use a Roger 3003 substrate with a permittivity of 3. Okay, so let's go to CST platform. So open a new template in CST. Planner and time domain. And we'll use the minimum frequency two and the maximum is six. And enable these three things. And we'll change the frequency points. So here is a CST design platform. Now let's go to view and disable the walking plane and turn on the local coordinate system. Okay, so we will create the substrate first. So select a break and let's make the first substrate. And the dimension will be SW by 2 and SW by 2 along the Y axis, SL by 2, SL by 2. And the thickness of the substrate is SH. And select the Roger 3003 substrate, this one. All right, so the value of SW is 50, SL is 50, and SH is 1.5. So this is the substrate. Now we'll make the partial ground plane. In order to do that, we will transfer the local coding system right along the edge and then we will rotate it 90 minus 90 degree okay now let's make the partial ground plane let's name it ground and then SW by 2, SW by 2 along the V minimum will be negative of uh, sorry, V minimum is 0 and the maximum will be 
GL. GL is the length of the partial ground plane. And that is uh, MT. MT is the thickness of the metal layer on the PCB substrate. All right. GL is 16.3. MT is 0 0.035. So that is the industry standard of the copper metal on PCB board. And it corresponds to one ounce copper. Okay. So the ground plane is made. Now the time for the patch. And we will select this edge and transfer the local coordinate system there. Again, rotate it. Okay, great. Now let's make the micro strip feed line first. Okay. So let's name it microstrip and then U is the thickness, the MW corresponds to the thickness or the width of the microstrip line and that would be the length of the microstrip line ML let's make it zero and the thickness of the microstrip line is MT all right, so MW is 2.5 and ML is 17. Okay, great. So we can transfer the local coordinate system right there. Select this H and align the WCS to that H. And let's rotate it to negative of 90 degree. Okay, great. Now let's make the patch And along the u-axis, this will be the width of the patch. So that is PW by 2. And along the blue axis, we will regard it as the length of the patch. So the blue minimum will have the PL, negative of PL. And OK, so the width of the patch is 17 and the length is 19.5 all right looks good now i'd like to create the feeding inset of the patch so for that we will transfer the local coordinate system to that point then we will make the inset So let's name it inset one and your maximum will be I and W, the width of the inset, and that is the length of the inset I and W I and L. And that is MT. And let's take it point as point five and I and L is three. Okay, so it is asking for more options. And then the first inset is done and the time for the second inset. So let's transfer the local coding system to that point. And now another inset. Let's name it inset 2 with the similar dimensions that we used a moment ago. 
I N W and that one is I N L and W max is the thickness M T and again we'll cut it great okay so everything is done except the port So before creating the port, let's join these two objects. Great. Now they are unified. They are one object now. Great. Now we will make the port of the antenna. So let's zoom this place and we have to select this face of the microstrip line. So pick face and we'll find out the coefficient of the port first. So go to macros and then solver and then ports and calculate port extension coefficient. And from here press calculate button. So the value of K is 6.04. So now let's create a new parameter K and store the value. And then we will use this value while defining the port. All right. Now let's make the port K multiplied by the height of the substrate, that is SH, K times SH, and here only SH. And this one is K times SH. Great. So everything is done. We just created a wideband patch antenna with a waveguide port. Basically, uh, an antenna with this partial ground plane can be also termed as monopole antenna. Anyway, so let's uh, simulate this antenna to see its performance. So select this and enable adaptive mesh refinement and press start. So the simulation will run and uh, I will pause the video and I will come back when the simulation is complete. Okay, so the simulation is complete. Now you will see the return loss plot from 1D results and its parameters. So we can see the antenna, uh, the patch antenna response is very, very wideband. So let's find out. Okay, so 2.9, okay, and that one is Wow, 5.5. So roughly speaking, two and a half uh, gigahertz of frequency bandwidth. So that's a lot. That's a lot. So now you can see that how using this partial ground plane will transform the impedance bandwidth of the antenna. Normally we have the narrow band response, but here we are having wide band response. So that's the advantage of using the partial ground plane. And this is the far field or the radiation pattern of the wideband patch antenna. The shape is donut shape. Obviously it will be a donut because there is no full ground plane at the back side. So the broadside radiation pattern will no longer be available. So let's check the surface current, how it looks like. So from here, let's see at 3 gigahertz. So 
So this is the vectorial surface current law. That means you can see the direction of the surface current, the J vector. And if we increase the number of objects and use the maximum current limit is 30. And then we can also change the symbol, I mean the indicator of the J vector, thin arrows, and change the scaling to you. Great, looks good. Now we can animate the field vector J. So this is how it looks like. So the vertical surface current is uh, on the radiator along the edge, the maximums are along the edge. You can see it. And that one is for 5 gigahertz. And in order to find out the absolute value or the magnitude of the J vector, we can use another plot. And for that, select the absolute value, the ABS. So this will give you the absolute value of the J vector, the magnitude of the surface current. It doesn't show the vector, the direction of the current. It only shows the magnitude of the current. And at 5 gigahertz, this is the current. Okay, so that's all about this wideband patchantina. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, you can leave the questions in the comment section. And don't forget to like this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel for uh, the new videos and thank you for watching this video